Hi everybody, welcome to a long-awaited Mando Lessons Live. It's been a little while, feeling a little rusty, but I'm glad to be hanging out with y'all. Yeah, catch up with the chat here. Looks like it's all kinds of stuff going on, which is great. Hope you're all doing well. Let me know if it sounds and looks all right. All right, Sheldon's on top of the number, 69. That's good to know. I kind of got lost because I was doing all these tests that never quite worked out right in my old place. But if you can hear me and see me, you can tell I'm in a new spot. Uh, it's pretty bare bones right now, but I got, it's going to fill out over the weeks. So stay tuned to watch the studio grow behind me. All right. Hello from New York, West Virginia, Cincinnati, Minnesota, Virginia, Portland. Hey, James. Uh, Plymouth, Manchester, West Virginia, New Hampshire, East Shore, Maryland, Sandwich. Let's see, all kinds of folks in the chat here. Have Dog Will Travel, good to see you too. South Carolina, Aunt Dinah's Quilting Party. I don't know that tune, I'll have to look that up. What a crowd, that's the truth, Rod. Agreed. Grazilia, so I apologize if I didn't say your name correctly. Chadwick Boseman, I heard passed away. Very sorry to hear that. Incredible actor. Incredible human being. But let's... So, the way these work is... Tune Green Mountain. Like the, the Irish tune? That's the tune you're talking about. I would love to make a lesson on that tune. I love that tune. All right, Montana, India, Oklahoma, folks from all over. Great to see you all. If you're new here, there's tons of new subscribers since I've done these regularly. Um, so if you're new here and you haven't been watching these, uh, the way they work, it's pretty open-ended. You get to ask me questions, uh, request tunes. I won't do anything copyrighted or kind of, you know, song. Most songs I, I won't do, but uh, the fiddle tunes, the kind of stuff I teach on my site, I'm happy to do. I'll happy to play them for you. Uh, we can do a little back and forth. We can do some play along jams where I play the melody and you play the chords and we swap back and forth. But um, yeah, it's pretty wide open. So if you got questions, no question too simple, no question too complex. It's all fair game. Uh, just looking forward to hanging out with you for an hour. South Carolina, Kentucky. All right, this is great. So many folks here. So that first tune that I played, that's the question. What is it called? Crooked Stovepipe, I believe. Oh, Sole Mio. I wish I could play that, but that is outside of my knowledge base. <laughs> it's a beautiful tune, though. All right, I'll play another tune here. I'll play a little of that Green Mountain, maybe a tune after it, a little bit of Irish music. I'm just going to poke at something here real quick. It's the first time I've run a live stream in this setting. And just want to make sure I've got a couple little things popping up. Bear with me while I... I don't know why exactly that's happening, but if it looks good on your end, I'm hesitant to... Uh, hesitant to change it. get that chat back up so I can follow along with you. I'll do my best to keep up with the chat, but uh, sometimes it gets away from me. Cool scale exercise. Spanish tunes. I don't know any Spanish tunes, really. Trinidad and Tob Tobago. Tobago. I don't know how to say that, but welcome. Thanks for joining in. Italian tunes. Again, I mostly know American, Irish, French, Canadian, uh, some Scandinavian music, but... Keep requesting, you know, I can't, uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy to take requests, I just may not know a lot of them. So, here's a little bit of the Green Mountain and some other stuff. <laughs> One more little thing while I get all this organized so I can see everything I need to see. All right. I uh, just had it in my head.
Had a couple Irish tunes. Had the Green Mountain first into Miss Monahan's, then into the Old Bush. Those are fun. We got a couple of requests, or uh, so we had a request about a scale exercise. Can definitely get to that. Um, blues improv. I can do a little bit of that. Um, advice for intermediate players. All right, so let's start with the, the scale exercise. I think that my favorite scale exercise is the uh, four finger closed position uh, scales and worksheets that are on the Jazz Mando website. I've done a couple lessons on my website about that, but if you go to jazzmando, all one word, dot com, um, you can find the strap is all tangled up here. Uh, you can and search FFCP. Um, there's some great uh, resources there with some great PDFs that really take you through a lot of finger exercises and scale exercises where you'll you'll do things. Uh, things like that, a little kind of scale arpeggiations and all kinds of good stuff. It's a really great left hand finger workout. Really gets you playing the same notes in a bunch of different positions on the instrument. Highly, um, yeah, total workout as Rupert says. That's, that's my favorite stuff. And then, you know, in terms of, I don't do a whole lot of scale practice myself. If I do, it's that kind of thing, more of a finger exercise. Because for me, playing fiddle tunes really is my kind of scale exercises. Because so many fiddle tunes are just a kind of a combination of scales, scale patterns, arpeggios, little bits of chords thrown in. It's kind of a little bit of everything all at once. And to me, they, they sound a lot more pleasing and are more fun to play than a, than a, a straight scale. All right, advice for intermediate players who are looking to improve playing on the mandolin. Well, uh, from uh, until about February of this year, I would have said, get out and play with as many other people as you can as regularly as possible. I know that's not unfortunately an option right now. Um, so what else you can do? I think um, one of the biggest challenges for me right now, you know, not being able to go out and play with a lot of folks is just kind of staying motivated and interested in kind of playing music. I get stuck like, oh, I'm playing all the same stuff because I'm not getting that much input from outside. And, you know, I think I've been enjoying listen. I just, I just, so I just moved into this new place. I just set up my record player for the first time in six months. So I'm really enjoying listening to some records getting some inspiration back in in musically uh, that way. So, you know, listening to some of your favorite music, ma making a little list like, oh yeah, that's a great tune or a great song. I should learn to do that. And then, you know, kind of figuring out what it is that you're interested in, what you want to kind of push yourself on. Maybe try to learn a little more complex of a tune, you know, a tune like Fisher's Hornpipe, which is pretty noty, or Sam Bush's version of Brilliancy is great. Um, kind of some of the more fireworksy mandolin tunes um, that really are going to kind of push you. You could work on some classical music if that's of interest to you. Um, yeah, and just, you know, do whatever, What mainly I would say, do whatever you can to stay kind of engaged and interested in the instrument, even if that's just listening to a lot of music that you like to listen to. Um, and just try to, yeah, stay... Stay engaged and excited about what it is you're doing to the best of your ability. And then, you know, whatever you can do to just pick up the instrument and work on something that's outside of your current skill level is a great thing to do. Uh, Kevin says, been working on Julianne Johnson and Julia Delaney. Both great tunes. I've been doing some lessons on Julianne Johnson. Um, some simple to complex and play along jam lessons that have come out recently or are about to come out. I get a little confused. Uh, an easy jazz tune. My, I don't play all that much jazz anymore, but um, a couple that pop to mind. I love uh, Take the A Train, that Duke Ellington, Billy Strayhorn tune. Um, that's pretty straight ahead. Something like um, In the Mood. I, I'm not going to play these jazz tunes because they're all copyrighted and YouTube will flag them. But um, in the mood, the Benny Goodman 
had a hit. Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -da that's enough of that. Um, that's a that's a great one to work out on the mandolin or uh, like Lady Be Good. Um, in the mood. Oh, I just said in the mood. Um, that one just popped out of my head. But you know, some of the kind of classics that aren't. If you look at like early jazz, there's a lot of stuff that is a lot less complex than <clears throat> if you jump into like trying to learn to play some Charlie Parker. That's a that's a steep learning curve. But a lot of the early stuff can be pretty, you know, not too noty. It's just I think the biggest thing is getting a, a kind of a new chord vocabulary under into your head and under your fingers, and then really listening to as much jazz as possible, and really just like learning. Um, by listening kind of what it is that jazz musicians do and what you like to hear and what you want to play as a jazz musician. Um, and then that will help you and in inform you kind of what you want to be working on. Charlie's March. It's a great tune. Kaher Rua. I don't know that one. Apologies. Thanks, Zachariah. It's good to be in a new spot. Yeah, I've was kind of fighting with the internet for the last six months, so I didn't have the, the these live streams, but now I've got really fast internet, and I'm excited to put it to work. Cool. Lewis has been trying to doll up some of the tunes I've already been fe working on and feel good about. Yeah, there's always, you know, working on that, that other level. Take a tune that you know, really nail it down, and then add work on adding some double stops and ornaments and other kind of fancy bits to it and and that really is nice because then a lot of that translates into your overall playing style so rather than just learning a new tune and learning a new tune you're building like a, a vocabulary of double stops and ornaments that sound good to you and that will translate from one tune to another really nicely Working on double stop positions, any tips or exercises? You know, I think let your ear be your, ear be your guide is my biggest thing for double stops. You know, listen, especially up the neck, listen to folks like Caleb Clotter, great mandolin player who does a lot of really tasteful um, up the neck stuff. Very melody driven. You know, try to find that, I think, up the neck. Try at least start with finding that melody. So I'll just play some kind of nonsensy folks. kind of a made-up melody make sure you got that strong melody and then find those other notes around it and see if you can do it in a couple different positions a couple different octaves you know kind of try to stretch that out speaking of that I'll do a little blues here oh Steven thank you so much for the super chat donation uh, really appreciate that it helps me do these live streams especially now that I can do them again it helps me keep the website running uh, really appreciate uh, any support whether it's Super Chats or PayPal donation or people who support me on Patreon or buy shirts. I just got these shirts in. Really enjoying these. Um, you can find the links to all that stuff in the description. Not, uh, not required, but really helps me put out new lessons every week and keep the website going. We'll do a little bit of a request for kind of a blues in G. So I'll start, I'll kind of get a chord progression. Uh, so G. Then it goes to C. G again. Then D. Uh, let me get a better progression here. I kind of, I kind of in bluegrass mode, and I can't quite get to blues land. <laughs> uh. D turn around. 
<laughs> there's a little bit of blues anyway. It's always a lot of fun to get into that world. <laughs> blues and Jay, oh, that's outside of my my abilities there. Let's see, catch up with the chat for a second here. Close scale total workout. How can I improve my accompaniment technique beyond strumming chords on the downbeat? Uh, I think it depends on what kind of style you're after. If you're going for bluegrass, see if you can get some kind of bluegrass chop, that offbeat sound. Or if you're in kind of more of an old time or folk strumming uh, situation. I've got a strumming pattern series on my website in the technique and fundamentals section where I go through a bunch of different kind of strum patterns. I recommend checking that out. A bunch of different styles where I break things down a little uh, more granularly. <laughs> um, but, you know, figure, figure out what it is that you're kind of after, whether it's that bluegrass chop or kind of a little more complicated kind of strumming pattern or more of kind of like an Irish feel. you're after and then I think there's probably a lesson for it on my website especially in the technique and fundamentals section request for take five that's a copyrighted tune so I can't do that one I also don't really know how to play it all that well um, hello from Calgary thanks for joining us Colleen parallel thirds yeah so that's a great exercise and just kind of thinking about harmony in general if you want a real challenge uh, something I like to do is try to sing a melody and play a, uh, a, a kind of a third harmony. So, and, and vice versa. So, ba, ba. so we're, we're going to be singing a G scale. It's a little low, but uh, and then we're going to play our harmony. So we're going to play a G scale, but start on the B and end on the B, but it's still got that F sharp. Start on the B with your voice. I did that I should do that as an exercise too uh, do I know any banjo tunes I do play banjo I play claw hammer banjo um, maybe one of these live streams I'll get that out it's kind of got a big pile of instruments just off screen over there so it's a little hard to get to specific stuff at the moment but that'll slowly be filling in behind me as we go I'm sure so tune in next time maybe for a little banjo I have a, I have a claw hammer banjo album um, there, if you go to mandobaron.bandcamp.com or you can search, uh, I think it, it, is, it might be in the description, um, or you can look up Solo Clawhammer Banjo. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Solo Clawhammer Banjo is my Solo Clawhammer Banjo album. If you want to hear me play some banjo. Um, all right, I'm probably behind on the chat here. All right, it sounds like Steven is a dulcimer player. D oh, yeah, that's a great steal. And, uh... Yeah, that'll probably get flagged if I do it, but that's a good one. Philly Folk Fest canceled. Yeah, it's, 
so much great stuff is getting canceled, but yeah, a lot of folks are in musical withdrawal right now. You're not alone. Yeah, well, you know, you're, you said you can uh, get to the place where you can play without totally screwing up. Just keep at it. You know, it'll come, the time will come when we can all get out there and play, play some music with people. And it's going to be a great big time when it happens. Bluegrass Breakdown. I don't know that one off the top of my head. I can't quite remember which one that even is. I think it's a copyrighted tune, unfortunately. Jerusalem Ridge Lesson, that's also a copyrighted tune. It's a Kenny Baker, Bill Monroe tune. Um, so that one's off the table, unfortunately. But there there are, if you look around, if you Google around, you can find tablature and maybe even people doing what I do with it, but I just can't do it because it's copyrighted. Oh, thank you, Lewis. Saying the Clawhammer banjo album is wonderful. Tay has a two-part question. Do you... Do anything to keep your joints from hurting. My thumb knuckles hurt. And what do you do about aliens described as politicians and trying to take over the government? Uh, that second part of that question is outside of the realm of uh, the, the scope of this website. But uh, the first part I can answer. Um, I think, you know, a good stretching routine. I've had various kind of joint and muscle and tendon stuff in the past. And I think... Something that really helps me is just doing a lot of stretching. A lot of times, um, you know, I'm not a medical expert or doctor of any sort. I am a musician. <laughs> um, but just for my own kind of learning and kind of working through this stuff, a lot of stuff for me has actually been in my back. So I can like feel things going on in my fingers or in my wrist or my thumb. And a lot of it is actually just like muscles in my back seizing up. And then kind of sending kind of bad pain and signals down to my hands. Um, so it's not always necessarily where you think it is. I mean, sometimes it totally is. Like if you're having thumb issues, it, it can actually be originating in your thumbs. But uh, if, you if you can find a good like sports massage therapist, uh, who I, uh, I've done that in the past, and they've really been able to kind of help me figure out where things are happening, and what I can do to kind of work on it and fix it up a little bit. Ashland Breakdown. I think that's a Ronnie McCurry tune. Uh, if not, I can't remember what it is. But I don't know it, and I think it might be copyrighted. Um, <laughs> uh any advice for playing songs like Ashland Breakdown that are done mainly out of second position? It's a little hard not knowing the uh, not knowing the tune off the top of my head, but second position. So are you talking like up here, like if you're in the key of B? I would say, you know, can I get, maybe use that FFCP. Um, those FFCP to like get those chords under your fingers and the intervals. Work on some um, kind of chord shapes, whether you're doing that kind of bar shape or the, the more chop shape. And, and then kind of work on some double stops out of that. It's a little hard for me not being able to pull Ashlyn Breakdown out of the, off the top of my head. Cool. John says, thank you for the YouTube events. Just beginning and enjoying jamming with you virtually. Cool. Thanks for joining. Glad to have you here. Okay, Ashlyn Breakdown is the last song in the Kenny Baker plays Bill Monroe. Yeah, a lot of those, you know, I mean, they drew from a lot of really traditional sources, but Kenny Baker wrote a lot of tunes. Bill Monroe wrote a lot of tunes. Um... Sometimes a little contested about who wrote what, but four-finger closed positions are the truth. They're certainly helpful. I will admit, though, 
I almost rarely play them. Um, because here's a nice four. Here, I'll get a little closer on the. There's very, if you close your eyes, or maybe if I like turn off the camera somehow, there's very little sound difference. I'll do a G chop chord. There's a nice four finger chop chord. Now there's a three finger chop chord. There's a two finger chop chord. So my chop chord actually is usually just two notes. I don't love the sound of those high strings ringing out. So you can, you can do it. But even if I'm using this whole shape, I'm often just playing the low two sets of strings. Which you could do the same as a two finger chord. So even though I've learned to do that shape, I rarely play those high strings. So um, four finger closed positions are great to know, but you can also often get around them. Um, and it's a personal preference. You know, some people love to hear that high treble sound. I often find that that gets in the way of the other instruments like a banjo or a fiddle, something bright, or maybe the melody, or somebody soloing. Like if you're chopping here and the melody's going and you're going or my preference to play just the low note is much more out of the way of the person taking the solo or playing the melody but everything's good to know might as well learn it all trouble it's been a while I'm kind of out of practice on the live stream thing but it's good all right I can see everything uh, four finger close position is there any reason you prefer an a style mandolin over an F style oh uh, I'd say the biggest reason is just price you know a given a style versus a given F style like the F style version of this make and model and brand this is an Ellis um, and kind of regardless of the brand, it's often about twice as much for for an F style over an A style. Just uh, you know, because they're so much more intricate, there's so much more work. You got to work on that scroll. You got those points. Um, there's kind of a lot more going on in terms of workmanship, and they're beautiful. I can't. I won't try to tell you that F styles aren't beautiful. Um, but I think I often find more. There's not. I don't think there's a two, two times more kind of sound quality that comes out of an F style mandolin. You know, I think an A style versus an F style of the same maker, there's going to be more difference between two A styles of kind of either different models or different brands than an A style and an F style of the same kind of quality from the same maker, whether, whether it's Ellis or Eastman or Kentucky. Um, and I'm mostly interested in the sound of an instrument and the playability, so that's kind of why I, I go for A-style mandolins. Shanty-esque songs. That's really kind of outside of my wheelhouse as well, unfortunately. Best way to practice chop chords. Uh, I think, you know, getting that, that four-finger shape is great. Um, it's definitely kind of a bear of a chord, but... Um, a great way to do it is you can start out with that, just kind of approach it. If you can practice this big G chop chord um, for 60 seconds every time you pick up the instrument, uh, there's a couple ways to do that. Um, and I think it'll slowly stretch out your hand and make it so you can grab that shape. You can start out with a G, like your first G chord, add the fifth fret, add the pinky, and you're probably stretching if you're not used to playing this chord once you get that pinky out there. You can also go the other way, go pinky, fifth, second, 
third, kind of build it backwards. And just when, when you get that chord down, play the strings individually so you know you're getting clean sound. Um, and then, you know, I think a, a big thing you can do is get that shape, get a couple of nice chop sounds. I've got some lessons on my website about like how to really dial in that chop. Let it ring and then release the pressure in your fingers. And then uh, you know, release it and as that speeds up. You get that chop sound. And once you get that clean, you know, take your hand away, shake it out, bring it back, get back in that shape. Force yourself to make that shape over and over again. But only, you know, like I said, 60 seconds at a time. Don't sit there for an hour trying to like force your hand into that shape because you're just going to end up hurting yourself. Uh, those are F style holes. Yeah, so yeah, the, this is a A style mandolin with F holes versus an A or F style. So F style has the the scroll and the points here. Um, and both instruments, whether A style or F style, can have uh, F holes that look like Fs or an oval hole, a single oval hole in the middle. So this is an A style with F holes which is going to be closer in sound to an F-style with F-holes than an F-style with an oval hole or an A-style with an oval hole. That's, that's a very big sonic difference is the kind of holes versus the actual shape of the instrument. Oikawa, if, apologies if I'm saying your name incorrectly. Congratulations on getting a mandolin. Um, what I recommend is going to my website, mandolessons.com. I have like 300, maybe 400 free lessons over there, ready to, or you can subscribe to this YouTube channel, and browse around here. I've got lessons, so I just teach you by ear. You don't need to know anything to get started. Go to the beginner series on my website um, and work through that. I show you everything from like how to hold it all the way through playing your first chords and songs. That'll, that'll get you going. And congratulations on the new instrument. And it's a fun journey, so enjoy it. Do I have any giveaway drawings in the works? That's a good question. I've never really thought about doing a giveaway, but maybe I could do a giveaway with some t-shirts or something. That would be fun. I like, I like your idea, Sheldon. Thank you. When you play a G chop, is the palm of your hand on the back of the neck, or is there space? There's a little space. I can't... Well, let's see if I can get this in the screen here <laughs> so it's a little awkward to like try to make it looks kind of like that that's <laughs> really awkward to do and it's kind of messing with some of my mechanics but I'm not uh, I'm not latched on like that so maybe if I do this so it looks kind of like that <laughs> Versus kind of when I do that, it really bends my wrist in a way that I think can cause some long-term issues just by kind of I, I try to keep my wrist as straight as possible at all times. But great question, Lewis. Where does it go? Morris says, Do you have tips for improvising and getting more comfortable exploring the neck of the mandolin? Uh, for improvising, my favorite thing to do is start with the melody, you know, so if you've got a tune. Um, like, um, Julianne Johnson. You know, distilling that down to its most basic form. And then trying to hit some of those key notes while also playing around with a little bit of scale. Mm 
versus we have <laughs> well, that was sloppy. Um, and then as you play, you know, it works a little better with a song. I just can't think of a song off the top of my head. Um, but, you know, take that really simple melody and try to fill in some of those cracks. And then after you're kind of comfortable still making it a recognizable melody with filling some of those cracks and then try to leave the melody behind a little bit. come back to the melody occasionally to not only remind myself and the listener kind of where we are in the tune but it also just makes it a little more familiar so you don't get lost in the in outer space of kind of improvisation and lose your place and lose your sense of wh where the chord progression is all that kind of stuff uh handsome molly is a great song i don't know it off the top of my head oh so that's a, a shanty a shanty song that's a great song, though. Tenor guitar. Yeah, I, I play a lot of tenor guitar. Um, my favorite kind of in, intro, I haven't played a They're starting to come out with new newer ones that I haven't played. I really like the Blue Ridge BR40T. Um, whenever I talk about gear, not sponsored. Um, but the, uh, yeah, the Blue Ridge BR40T is a great... Great guitar. I think it can also depend on what you want to do with it. I play tenor guitar, um, mostly playing like chords and backing up fiddlers. Um, so it's the that kind of that Blue Ridge style is a little warmer sounding than something with like a smaller body and maybe a shorter scale length. Um, I like instruments with longer scale length, so I like a 23 inch scale uh, tenor guitar. What I will say, I have a website that's very basic, but it's just called tenorguitarlessons.com um, and I have a lot of information over there on just the basics of like finding a tenor guitar, tuning it, scale length, things like that. But tenor guitars are very fun. Maybe I'll pull one out in another live stream. Assuming the stream is over by then and somebody fancies playing along some Irish tune, Shannon Heaton is streaming a live session on her YouTube channel. Cool! Uh, so that's at 11 PST or 2 Eastern Time. Cool. Yeah, Shannon's great. Songs akin to East Tennessee blues. So yeah, some like the raggy stuff. Um, Pig Ankle Rag is a great one. Um, what is that one? Uh, there's one in F that I can't remember. It's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't come up with it. Yeah, but look, some of that kind of raggier, bluegrassy stuff is super fun. Uh, Pig Ankle Rag. Check that one out. There's a lesson on my website for that one anyway. Thank you, Robert, and also the Leland for the Super Chat donation. It's really appreciate it. Helps me run the website. So any, any donation, where, however you want to do it, PayPal, Super Chat, Patreon, merch i appreciate it all and keeps the, keeps the site running so thank you both so much empty mike says good place to get a mandolin set up in the portland or southwest washington area um my favorite shop in portland so i just moved to portland um is strum which is in southeast on stark um they're amazing they do good work they know where to point you if the work you're, you know, sometimes music shops will say like, oh yeah, I can do that. And 
they don't actually have that much experience. If they if you're bringing them something you're not uh, they're not comfortable with, they'll definitely advise you on where to bring it. I'm new here, so I don't know all the places. So I would bring it to them. They're really great folks. Uh, my my favorite shop in Portland at the moment. Also, a, a little bit of local news. They actually just got broken into this morning. So if anyone here is in the Portland area, they somebody stole like 10 Les Pauls and a Dan Electro double neck. Uh, find them on Instagram and keep your eyes out for a bunch of electric guitars, windows smashed. Really bummer story. So if you're in the Pacific Northwest, check out Strum PDX on Instagram and see if you can help them hunt down their guitars because that's not a fun thing to have happen. Yep, uh, Elderly is a good spot to find those Blue Ridge tenors. Yep, 12th fret I think is also good. I, I went in there once, I think. Yeah, there's it's it's nice. I moved from like rural Maine where there's not a whole lot going on anywhere, and now I'm in a city with more music shops than I can visit. <laughs> cool. Gibson tenor built in the 60s. Those are cool, yeah. I've played a couple of those. Hi from Belgium. Hello from the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Thanks for joining. All right. I, I don't uh, I think those are all the questions. If you got questions, by all means, throw them out there. Maybe I'll play a little bit of that East Tennessee blues. Tennessee Blues. Cool. Ant-Man is ready to make a cigar box tenor banjo. That'll be fun. Rod, thank you so much for the Super Chat donation. Appreciate it. Oh, Pix. Yes, I saw that question earlier, Rod. Uh, pre, uh, thank you for reposting. So I use... Um, it's kind of worn at the moment. The stuff's coming on. I don't know if you'll be able to read it anyway. But it's a Dunlop Prime Tone. 1.5 millimeter. Um, it's very similar to a blue chip. I love blue chips. Um, I used them for a long time, but I honestly can't actually tell the difference between a blue chip and this. And these things are like two bucks rather than uh, 35. So and I, and I like to lose picks, so <laughs> I, I switched over to these. But yeah, I like big in general. You know, I'm not brand specific. I like big, heavy triangle picks for mandolin. 
Um, actually, it depends on the mandolin. If I'm playing an old Gibson, uh, like a one millimeter, I actually use, I've just started using uh, nylon picks. The, is it Dunlop? Yeah, Dunlop nylon picks. Um, so I'll use a, uh, it's actually a 1.14 for, because um, they're a little, in general, I use like a one millimeter, but nylon's a little more bendy, so I, I bump up by a gauge to 1.14. For an old Gibson oval hole, um, and then for tenor guitar, I like a 0.6 in regular terms. So this is actually a 0.88 for for tenor. I think you know one of the it's a, a great way to find a new sound and figure out what works for you on an instrument to uh, just you know get get a handful of picks, spend five or ten bucks on a handful of picks, see what you like. Um, you can get a lot of different sounds out of an instrument. I have a a lesson on my website about different kinds of picks. Uh, you can find it there or here on YouTube. How old is the Ellis? This is from 2009. So I think it's 11 years. It might have just had its 12th birthday because I think it was like April. Oh no, I'm totally lost in the year. That's what happens when uh, <laughs> you get quarantined. Uh, so yeah, I think it's 11 or 12 years old, 2009. All right, let's see. So Kevin says, I struggle with the B part. Is that on uh, East Tennessee Blues? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely, it's kind of a little slow moment, and it can, as long as you keep your hand moving. If you're talking about Kevin, I kind of lost the beginning of your question there. But if you're talking about East Tennessee blues, um, just kind of keep your hand moving through that part. Whether you're just playing, or if you're doing more, the double stops that I like to use are actually shift up and go seven and three, kind of hammer on from five to seven on the A string. So actually, it stays on three on the E string the whole time, and I go five to seven, five, three. So you end up with three and three. And then you do the same exact thing on the middle two sets of strings. And then you're back here. But just that beginning of the A part, I think that's what you're talking about. If not, please uh, let me know. Thank you, MT Mike, for the super chat. Glad you got going with my website, and thanks for sticking around, and good to have you here. Just started playing at 40 with a rogue mandolin. Awesome. That's, that's a great way to go. Glad you, you, you picked up an instrument. They're a lot of fun, and if you're like me, you got a little extra time now to pick up a new hobby. Yeah. So Okay, so Ant-Man says I like a .73. Yeah, I... I, I play pretty hard, and I um, I like a, I think in general, there's a, a general, it's, you know, it's it's really subjective as to, or in like personal to what kind of pick you like. I mean, there's some, I don't know how true it is, but there's a lot of stories about Bill Monroe, but there's a story that I've heard where somebody says like, Bill, what kind of pick do you use? And he like pulls a pick out of his pocket and looks at it and says, I don't know, I found this in the seat of the taxi on the way to the gig. So, like, didn't really care too much um, about picks. I don't know how true that is. People like to make up stories about Bill Monroe. But, uh, yeah, you know, I'd say the best thing you can do is try out a bunch. I think there's a general trend towards thicker picks on mandolin, at least in the bluegrass world. Um, it just kind of gives you a little more ability to kind of really... It, it's, a, it's a less bright sound 
Um, and maybe if you're playing those chop chords, kind of taking off some of that high end by using a thick pick that doesn't bend as much is also going to give you kind of a shorter chop rather than the pick bending and going through the string like that. You'll get that kind of quicker chop. But yeah, it's totally personal preference. Use what you like. All right, let's see here. I think I've once again picked up all the questions. Uh, John says, just got a Don Dreyer. Oh, I've heard of those. That's great. Yeah, those look very cool. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, v. Sivor says, you have music on iTunes I can buy. That's a good question. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Uh, if you go to my website, mandolessons.com, there's a store page. I think it's called store. Oops, I'm on the wrong. Excuse me while I look at my own website to see how it works. Oh. So yeah, store. If you go to the store page on my website, but uh, you can find all of my music. I've got a couple, I've got many albums out, mostly on Bandcamp. I think my, my band Velocipede, uh, which is, I play mandolin and tenor guitar. My friend Julia plays fiddle. One of those albums might be on iTunes, but uh, you can definitely get it through Bandcamp. So go to mandolessons.com, look, look at the store page, and that's where you can find. I've got a banjo album. I've got a duo mandolin album with my friend Noah Fishman. I've got a solo old-time mandolin album. I've got uh, a couple albums with Velocipede, my duo, and more stuff in the works. So keep an eye out over there. Yeah, classical often will use smaller and thinner picks. Cool. Well, I think that might be a good spot to wrap wrap up because it's a little after 11 you guys can go check out shannon's um again shannon heaton thanks for the tip um is doing um a, I, some kind of irish play along i can't remember exactly what it was she was doing but check uh look her up shannon heaton here i think on youtube is what was said um but more good music on the internet that's one thing is there's lots of good stuff happening when festivals get canceled other things um, pop up on the internet. So go find your next musical adventure. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, again, I'm going to be doing these every week now, Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and I look forward to seeing you all again. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks again. <laughs>